To help us get an understanding of what a logarithmic function is, or understand what logarithms are, let's look at a couple of numbers here that I want to introduce to you. Uh, let's look at this number. And let's compare it to Now, what do you notice about those numbers? Well, they don't look that different to us, do they? Other than they're very, 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 very small numbers. But other than that, they look awfully close together and they look so insignificant from one another because of how small they are, it's hard for us to get an understanding of what these numbers might mean or might mean to us or why we might care. So we're going to come back to this in a second, but let's look at how we can kind of compare a logarithm to a number. So let's imagine that we have some numbers. So I have some factors of 10. Do you remember how we can write these in an exponential notation? Well, this becomes 10 to the third. Likewise, we work our way down. One, what's that one? Remember that's 10 to the zero. Point one is 10 to the negative one. You guys all right with that? Just took a normal number and rewrote it in exponential notation, a notation that we got used to understanding. Well, there's another way to write the number as well, and it's called the logarithm, the logarithmic function or the logarithm of the number. And what would be the logarithm of, of 1,000 or the logarithm of 10 to the third? Well, the logarithm of that is just a 3. The logarithm of 100 is just a 2. Logarithm of 10 is a 1. Logarithm of 1 is a 0. Seeing a pattern here? That's right. The logarithms are just the exponents of the particular numbers that we discovered in its exponential notation. That's all a logarithm is. It's just the exponent of the number that we're looking at. And because we can, we, because we can learn to understand this, we can start to compare numbers, not by these huge numbers that we can get, by simply by looking at their exponents and comparing it from there. So let's look at these two numbers that we originally had right there. How many of you guys ever been in a swimming pool? And that you felt like, wait a minute, my eyes are just a little itchy going on. What's happening? Well, all liquids in this form are measured by a pH scale. And a pH scale can determine the acidity of the water or the liquid or whatever it is, all the way from like battery acid, all the way down to something soft and nice like milk or stream water. Because those differences are so vast, but we wanted to develop a scale that can see all that information, we're not going to compare them by their numbers. We're going to compare them by their logarithms. So if I took the pH scale, converted this number into its pH balance, I would find that this number right here would turn out to be a pH balance of 7.4. This one underneath of it, I would discover that it would turn out to be a pH balance of 8.4. Now those two numbers I can work with, but it's only if I understand that these are logarithms of each other, or logarithms. One number is 10 times larger than the other. It's not just one times larger, it's 10 times larger than each other. 7.4, that's the basic pH value of our eyes. 8.4 is a little bit more basic. And so our eyes will be will feel good and watered at 7.4, but if the pH is off balance by a factor of 10 up to an 8.4, then my eyes are going to get a little itchy. So on this scale, like I mentioned, the scale goes from 0 um, all the way down to 14, 15, or 16. I can't remember where 0 was um, battery acid. So... How much stronger is battery acid than just the normal content of our eyes? Well, it's, this is every jump is by a factor of 10. So if I had a 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and a 0, this would be 10 times greater, 100 times greater, 1,000 times greater, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million, 10 million times greater the acid content 
of battery acid as compared to our eyes. But because those numbers are so large, we need to figure out a way how do we describe them in a way that makes sense. And that's one of the reasons why we understand and use logarithms. It's there to help us understand very small numbers and also there to understand very large numbers.